Hello! In today's video, I'm sharing my top 10 long-wearing skin-like foundations. It's hard to find a foundation that truly looks like skin and also wears a long time. I've done videos on both of those here on my channel, top long-wearing foundations and skin-like foundations, but I wanted to take that a step further and give you foundations that go beyond looking natural that can truly look like skin and wear a long time. I have options here for all skin types, price points, and various coverage levels, and I will show you what they look like on my face. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new and let's go ahead and get into these 10 fantastic skin-like foundations that are also long wearing. Now for those of you who aren't familiar with me or my skin type, I'm 46 years old. I'm on prescription tretinoin, which means I can get some little dry flaky areas that crop up every now and then. It's important to me that my foundations don't accentuate those areas, but my skin is mostly combination oily, meaning I can get some shine in my T-zone. I also don't want my foundations to exacerbate that shine as the day goes on and make me look greasy. It's kind of hard to find that balance sometimes. I live in New Orleans. It is humid here most of the year. I know a lot of you like to know climate as well, so I wanted to tell you that too. Now I'm going in coverage order for the most part, starting with lightest coverage, going to heaviest. There's going to be some overlap, but all of these will give you some sort of coverage beyond, say, what a normal skin tint would give you. They're going to do more than even out redness, and yet they can still all look like skin. Okay, I just had a minor interruption by this little guy before I could start in with my first foundation, which is absolutely one of my favorites, maybe of all time, especially for the summertime when it is brutally hot and humid here. This is the Bobbi Brown Skin Long Wear Fluid Powder Foundation. Now, if you've tried this and you gave up on it, you couldn't get it to work for you, just hear me out before you completely give up. I normally don't like fluid or liquid to powder foundations. I feel like they don't look like skin. They look very powdery and they can emphasize some dryness or texture. This one is not like that, but you have to apply it kind of a certain way, which is very easy once you kind of get the hang of it. This is $40 for 1.4 ounces. So you get more in this tube than you do in the typical one ounce bottle of foundation. There are 28 shades. In the middle of the winter, when I'm at my palest, I am warm beige. I am one of those people that can wear all the sunscreen in the world and hats, but I still get some color on my face in the middle of the summer. So around that time I'm shade natural tan. Most of the year I mix the two. I really need a shade in between these two for the majority of the year. I don't mind having both because I wear this so much. This blurs pores like crazy. No primer needed. It has no scent and it has flexible coverage from I would say sheer to light medium. If I use a damp sponge I get lighter sheerer coverage. If I use a dry sponge I get more light light medium coverage. I do not think this is buildable. It doesn't build on itself. So I like to already kind of know what kind of coverage I'm, I'm going for right from the start, but it does go beyond just evening out redness. It just gives a beautiful, natural, soft, matte, skin-like finish, and it does provide some coverage. Now, I have to apply this very similarly to how I apply Estee Lauder Double Wear because it does set very quickly. So I can't dot this all over my face and then go in and spread it out and take my time. And I think that's why maybe a lot of people write this off initially because it just kind of sticks to their skin. It's sticking to your skin because it is bulletproof. So I will have that how I apply Estee Lauder Double Wear video linked below so that you can kind of see how I apply this foundation and Estee Lauder Double Wear. And actually quite a few of these foundations, just know that that video will be linked below at the top of the product list so that you can reference it. It doesn't take long to apply your foundation that way at all. It's just a different technique. You don't want to go in with a brush with this foundation. It's just not going to work. I can wear this on the hottest, most humid days and never, ever have have to blot my face. It's pretty miraculous. I think there are some people that could use this and not set their face with powder at all because it's pretty self-setting. It also has a blue light and environmental protection, so it's great to wear even if I'm sitting in front of a computer all day. It is one of the most humidity and sweat resistant foundations I've ever worn. Now, if I'm super dehydrated and have a lot of flakiness going on, it can kind of pick up on that. So for that reason, I think this is suited more for, I would say, normal to oily skin. It's definitely worth trying if you're someone who gets shiny in your T-zone, you want a sheer to light, light, medium coverage foundation that applies quickly, 
once you know how to apply it and will stay put all day long and look truly like skin. It's underrated, it's one of my favorites. Next up, we have Pat McGrath Labs Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Foundation. You can see from where I'm placing this in the video, this is not a heavy coverage foundation like people expected. I think that's why a lot of people didn't like it. They wanted more coverage out of a Pat McGrath foundation. So this is $60 and you get 1.18 ounce, which is a little bit more than the typical one ounce. There are 35 shades and I am light medium 13. By the way, I will have my foundation shade match list linked down below as well and my concealer shade match list if you're interested in that. I keep a running updated list over in my blog. It lives over there. I know it's really helpful for a lot of you that are light, medium, neutral, warm toned like I am. So this is a foundation that applies very quickly, very easily, and it's got a serum complex in it that moisturizes and provides some anti-aging, anti-wrinkle benefits. This evens out the skin nicely and provides some coverage. I would say sheer to light medium coverage and the skin just looks nice and healthy and beautiful. For any of these lighter coverage foundations, if I want more coverage in areas I can spot conceal, I don't mind doing that. I just love it when my skin looks nice and healthy and evened out. This foundation in particular is supposed to enhance your skin and just make it look better and that's one of the reasons why I like it. Right after I apply it, I feel like I get a satin matte finish and then after I set it, it turns into a soft matte finish. I am someone that has to set my foundations. You may not be, but I get too much shine during the day if I don't. And I love a soft matte finish, especially when it looks like skin. This looks really nice on the pores and just gives the skin a more enhanced appearance. It feels nice and lightweight on the skin. I don't really notice it when I'm wearing it, which is always a bonus. Now I do need to blot a couple of times a day. I don't really mind because my makeup stays in place. It still looks good all day long, even if I do need to blot away any shine. It's not a greasy shine. I think this is a fantastic sheer to light medium coverage foundation that is just beautiful and perfect for any skin type. Next up, we have Revlon Candid Natural Finish Anti-Pollution Foundation. This retails for $10.99 for 0.75 ounces. So you're getting a little bit less than the typical one ounce bottle of foundation. There are 31 shades. I'm in the shade 300 Dune. This offers antioxidant and blue light protection. I am loving these foundations that are offering blue light protection because I'm on my computer a lot. I know a lot of you are too. So I just love having these as options. This applies very quickly and easily and is buildable from light to medium coverage. There is a hint of a scent to this, but I don't notice it at all once it's on my face. I'm really only mentioning scent when I notice a scent. The foundations before, I didn't notice any issues with scent. I would say this gives a soft, natural, velvety matte finish that doesn't really blur the pores, but doesn't enhance them either. It looks like my skin, but enhanced and nicer than it actually is. I mean, our skin has pores. It's lightweight and breathable and it's flattering. I just feel like every time I wear this, my skin looks looks lovely. It looks nice. I may have to blot my T-zone a couple of times during the day with this. That does not bother me as long as it's not a greasy shine I'm blotting and as long as my makeup stays intact all day long. I mean, blotting is just something those of us that get shiny in our T-zones, we just get used to that. I think this is a great drugstore foundation option for any skin type. We're going from drugstore all the way up to luxury with La Mer, the Soft Fluid Longwear Foundation. I have put this in countless videos. If you because it is just beautiful, skin-like, long wearing. There's a reason why people just rave about this constantly. So this retails for $135 for one ounce. There are 27 shades. Now, if you have this foundation or if you have tried a sample of this and you felt like the shade was a color match for you, I'd like to know if you feel the shade description on Sephora is what you think it should be. Because I am typically light, medium, neutral, neutral, warm across all foundations. And I've been shade linen and I feel like I bought this based on the description a long time ago. And now the description is reading as very light skin with warm undertone. And if I went with very light skin with warm undertone with all my other foundations, we would be way, way off. I'm wondering if they changed their shade descriptions or if linen has 
changed? Like if I bought linen now, would it look differently? Or if their shade descriptions are just off? I'm baffled by this. So this includes La Mer's proprietary skincare complex. That's what gives it that distinctive La Mer scent. It's supposed to bring balance to the skin with continued wear. It's supposed to leave it more plumped and hydrated and soften fine lines and wrinkles and diminish the look of pores and imperfections. This applies very, very quickly and easily and it is very satiny before I set it. But after I set it with powder, it turns into this demi matte finish that looks like a second skin. And I would say this is buildable from light to medium coverage. It's very lightweight, extremely pore blurring, and it just makes the skin look healthy and beautiful. It feels great. It looks like skin. It lasts all day, even through humidity, and it has anti-aging skincare benefits as well. So if you're wanting to splurge and get yourself a luxury foundation, I think this is a fantastic one for any skin type. Let's visit the drugstore again for a little bit, starting with Essence Pretty Natural Hydrating Foundation. This retails for $6.99, roughly depending on where you buy it, if it's on sale or not, and you get 1.05 ounces. There are 15 shades. I am in the shade 70 Warm Cashew. This is supposed to be hydrating because it's got hyaluronic acid and aloe vera. This applies very quickly and easily using any method, and it's buildable from light to medium coverage. The finish that it gives is just a really pretty soft radiant finish, which somehow lasts on my oily, shiny T-zone as the day goes on. A lot of radiant foundations just slide right off. This one does not. This looks great on pores, beautiful on the skin overall. It feels very lightweight. I can't even feel this foundation as I'm wearing it. Now, I do have to blot some shine as the day goes on a couple times, maybe two or three times. It's not a greasy shine. My makeup wears really, really well throughout the day. If you're someone with oily, oily combination skin and you've tried other radiant foundations and have been really disappointed, but you want that finish, I would give this a try. I think this is a great drugstore foundation for any skin type if you're looking for something with a radiant finish. We're still at the drugstore talking about CoverGirl Clean Matte BB Cream. This is $9.99 for one ounce. There are six shades that span multiple skin tones each. I am in the shade Light Medium 530. Unless I specify how to apply something or how not to apply something, you can apply most of these using any method you want. You kind of have to figure out what works best for you. For this foundation, for instance, I would say it gives light to solid, medium, maybe almost even medium full. If there was something in between medium and medium full, I would say that's what this gives. For light coverage, I would use a damp sponge. For that medium, almost medium full coverage, I would use a dry sponge. I prefer using a dry sponge to a brush because I don't want to have to deal with kicking up dry patches like a brush would. I don't want to have to deal with streaks. It's so much quicker for me and it's less maintenance than dealing with the brush. Not that I never use a brush. I do have some good brushes that I now use, but it's just my, my usual method. This applies quickly and easily no matter how I applied it. Now this does have a hint of a scent to it that I don't really notice after it's applied. Everybody's different. Some people are more sensitive than others, but I did want to mention it. I just don't really notice it. And this gives a flattering natural matte finish that looks great on pores. I would even say on some days it it looks a little bit radiant depending on the humidity, what skincare I use, just different factors that go into how foundations sit on your skin. It's lightweight, it's breathable, it never accentuates any dry flakes. It says clean matte, but I do have to blot with it maybe twice during a really long day. Again, just like with the other ones in this video, it's not a greasy shine. My makeup stays intact all day long. I feel like the name of this is really misleading because it has matte in the name and it also says it's for oily skin right here on the bottle. And this has such a versatile, beautiful finish that works well even when I do have dry areas. There are many of you with dry skin that use and love this. I personally think this is great across all skin types. Maybe I'll say normal to oily, but I do think there are some dry skinned people out there that can use this very successfully and be so happy. This is a great drugstore foundation that I can't put in BB cream category because it goes beyond being just a BB cream with minimal coverage. This gives foundation coverage. It's a great drugstore option 
for any skin type, in my opinion. I know, I know, some of you are saying to yourselves, will you shut up already about Dior Backstage Foundation? Well, the nature of this product, long wearing and skin-like, means it has to be in this video. I feel like this ends up in all of my top foundations videos. So this is $40 for 1.6 ounces. You get a lot of foundation in this bottle, more than typical foundations. There are 40 shades. I am in shade 2.5N in the middle of the summer, 2N, I would say the majority of the winter and a lot of the year I mix the two. This is another foundation. I don't mind having two bottles because I go through this foundation. This is one of my favorite top foundations of all time. This is very easy to apply with any method. This has the most versatile coverage and finish of almost any foundation I own, and a lot of makeup artists use it for that reason. It's also great across multiple skin types. Now, I know there's always gonna be foundations that work well for me that don't work for you and vice versa. That said, you can take this from a sheer veil of coverage all the way to medium full. It will look like skin. It also lasts all day long. The way it almost melts into the the skin, even when you're building it, I hesitate to even use the word building it because it doesn't build up on the skin. It covers while still melting into the skin. I don't quite understand how it does that. Your pores look so beautiful with this. I mean, if you add in a pore blurring primer and powder, you might not have any pores by the time you're done with this foundation. It's also waterproof and sweat proof, which is insane, especially for my climate. Now there is a scent to this when you first dispense it. I don't notice it after it's applied. I have sensitive skin. It never bothers me. People love to point out that there's alcohol in here. Love it. There is alcohol in Armani Luminous Silk. There's alcohol in tons of foundations. Chanel that is a favorite among several mature beauty influencers, YouTubers. Most of us typically have our skincare, serums, moisturizers, sunscreen underneath this and alternate several different foundations. I have never been bothered by the alcohol in this or any other foundation that I wear. That's just me. I cannot speak for anyone else. What I can speak to is that this is very quick and easy for me to blend it out. It takes on the finish of any primer or no primer that I wear underneath. And that's what I meant earlier when I said it was versatile in terms of coverage and finish. I can leave it sheer. I can build it. I can wear it to run errands. I can wear it in the evening to dinner and it's always appropriate. It feels lightweight. It's flattering. Ring. I love it. I think it's great across all skin types. Now we have another foundation that is great across all skin types, in my opinion, that I was pretty surprised by when I first tried it. It's another luxury foundation that seems a little bit less luxury priced coming off the La Mer. This is the Chanel Ultra La Tinte Foundation. It is $60 for one ounce. There are 35 shades. I am in shade B. 30. One thing that surprised me about this is how little I needed to get really great coverage. I feel like I use less of this to get coverage than I do other foundations. So I feel like I at least get a lot for my money when it comes to this luxury foundation. I need like half a pump to get medium to medium full coverage. I also thought this was going to be a pretty matte foundation, but it's not. It gives a lovely soft matte finish that I would say lasts about three to four hours before or I get some shine breakthrough, not a greasy shine. I just blotted, everything's all good. And I, I, the finish is just so pretty. It's got this soft focus powder that's supposed to give you this luminous perfecting finish and be really flattering. And I feel like it is flattering. It diffuses everything. My pores look really nice. It's very lightweight, especially for a medium to medium full coverage foundation. I don't really notice it at all as I'm wearing it as the day goes on, even when shine comes through. Now there is is a slight scent to this. I don't notice it after my makeup is on. I guess I thought this was going to be more for oily combination skin only because it is a matte foundation. It seems like those of you with true dry or even normal dry skin have a harder time finding bulletproof foundations, long wearing foundations, because a lot of them are geared to those of us with normal or oily or combination skin when they have a matte finish. And those types of foundations can really emphasize any dryness and they can make you know anyone with mature skin look older. This to me fills in that gap beautifully.
lovely. It gives medium, medium full coverage while not looking like it gives medium to medium full coverage. It looks like skin while providing that coverage and gives anyone a beautifully soft, diffused, natural look. Now for those of us with oily combination skin, or you know, even if you have a little bit of dryness, but you do get shine, if you don't mind radiance coming through, knowing that your makeup's still gonna last and look beautiful through the day, I think this is beautiful for you too. So I think kind of depending on what your needs are, I think this could span all skin types. I personally absolutely love this for my oily combination skin that gets some dryness. It just looks beautiful all day long. Next up, we have Laura Mercier Flawless Lumiere Radiance Perfecting Foundation. I've talked about this foundation several times. I think it's fantastic across all skin types. This is $48 for one ounce. There are 30 shades. I wish I had a definitive shade to give you. I tried Macadamia. It was too light. The shade that I'm holding in my hand is Latte, and I also have Buff here. Neither of these work really great either, so I'm kind of struggling to find my shade right now. When I find it, I will update my foundation shade match list. This blends out very easily, very quickly, and gives medium to medium full coverage and blurs my pores beautifully. Some radiant foundations feel tacky. It never does. This feels really nice on the skin. I rarely have to blot with it. Every now and then I do when it's very hot and humid outside, but I love that I have a medium to medium full coverage radiant foundation option that lasts all day long and that on the rare occasion that I do have to blot with it, that shine that I get isn't a greasy shine and when I do have to blot, it doesn't break down my makeup. And you know, I find that as I get older, sometimes radiant foundations can emphasize things that I don't want emphasized. This one doesn't. It makes everything just look better and beautiful. This is a fantastic foundation across skin types. If you like radiant coverage, that doesn't make you look shiny. It just makes everything look soft focused and beautiful. Number 10 is going to be a little bit different. I'm giving you the drugstore dupe bonus to the high end foundation that I'm going to be talking mostly about. There's a couple of differences that I'll point out when I get to the drugstore version. I know a lot of you have one or even both of these foundations and you may think they look natural but they don't look like skin. It's about the application for me and I'll get into that. So this is Lancome Tint E Doll. This retails for $47 for one ounce. There are 50 shades. I am in shade 320 Bisque Warm. This is a long wearing foundation that is very easy to apply. It doesn't set too quickly. You can dot it all over your face and continue to apply and you're good. Now to get skin-like coverage out of this, I typically use a damp sponge and I apply a thin layer of this and it gives this beautiful satin matte finish that kind of blurs the skin and provides medium coverage almost to medium full that looks beautiful and natural and blurs the pores. If I need any more coverage in specific areas I might add it to those areas or I might not because it has that blurring ability sometimes I intend to and then I look at my skin and I find I don't really need to add more coverage. A thin layer will give beautiful coverage that looks like skin. If I take more than necessary, which may not even seem like a lot, it will go into natural looking makeup, but not skin-like makeup, if that makes sense. Now, there are times during the year where I do have to blot with this too. It's not a super mattifying foundation. Just one or two times during a long day, I don't mind. My makeup stays completely intact. It's a beautiful foundation that can look like skin if you apply it properly. I think it's been so popular with so so many people for so long because it does apply easily and quickly and it looks so natural and lasts so long during the day. It's easy and it's just reliable. That said, I recently duped it to L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear, which, you know, has the same parent company, so it makes sense, but there are a couple of differences. So this is $14.99 for one ounce. There are 40 shades and I am in shade vanilla. I think Tenny Doll looks slightly better on my pores, although this does not look bad by any means. It looks very natural and slightly blurred. Improved, but not quite as improved as Lancome Tenny Doll. Both still look really natural 
natural though. And I would say I get a little bit more mileage during the day out of Lancome. Although this lasts a really long time too. There is a slight, slight fragrance to the L'Oreal that I don't really notice with Lancome. Aside from those tiny minor differences, I don't think you could go wrong with either. I hope you found this both enjoyable and helpful if you're looking for long wear skin like foundations. Let me know your favorite in the comments down below. Half of my face today is done with one foundation and the other half with another for an upcoming video. That's why I didn't state what foundation I had on my face. So if you're not subscribed, be sure that you hit that subscribe button and become part of the family so that you don't miss that or any other video I have coming up. If you want to see more top foundations videos, I'll have that playlist linked here so you can check some of those out. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.